What's up everyone? I'm Kiyoshi Mino, and today you're going to be learning how to make a sloth that you can hang up in your houseplants. So today's video has been divided into four parts. One, creating a wire armature or skeleton. Two, sculpting the body. In this section, I'll be explaining to all you beginners out there what exactly needle felting is. Three, creating the face. And four, adding fur. First of all, big shout out to Living Felt for making this video possible. Living Felt is the largest felting supplier in the US. So here are all the materials that I use today. This is core wool from Living Felt. I also used MC1 wool from Living Felt. Uh, this is gray, beige, and black. You also need merino wool in yellow, white, beige, light brown, and dark brown. And of course you'll need felting needles. This is a 40 gauge spiral needle, which is an all purpose needle and a 42 gauge needle, which is for fine details. Something soft to felt on, I like to use a foam pad. And these are available at Living Felt and they're great because they're made from natural materials. 24 gauge wire, sewing scissors, wire cutters, either measuring tape or rulers fine, craft glue, and a permanent marker. The first thing we're gonna need to do is make an armature or skeleton for our sloth. The armature is key because it provides strength and stability and acts as a guide through the rest of the creation process. To start with, measure and cut a 6 inch piece of wire for the spine, marking it at 2 inches from one end and 1 inch from the other. At 2 inches, you'll be attaching the arms and at 1 inch, you will attach the legs. Next, measure and cut 4 7 inch pieces and also mark them at 2 inches from one end and 1 inch from the other. These will become the legs. Finally, cut 8 3 inch pieces to serve as claws, marking them at 1 inch from one end. To attach the front leg wires to the spine wire, grab two of the legs and place them against the spine, lining up the two inch marks on the legs with that of the spine. Twist the bottom two inches of the legs together with the spine. Make sure to twist tightly and leave no space between the wires or they will slip. For the hind legs, you'll do the same thing except this time you will use the one inch mark on the spine as the attachment point. Next up is the claws. Attach two of the three inch wires to one of the legs by lining up the one inch mark on the leg with the one inch mark on the claws and twisting just as you did with the spine and legs. Twist the wires together like you did with the legs. Repeat this process for the rest of the claws. Your completed armature should look something like this. Now that we have the armature done, we can start adding wool. Start by adding a little glue to the first couple inches of the spine. Take a small clump of core wool and start wrapping it around the glued section. Wrap it as tightly as possible. Once you've covered up all the glue, Grab your coarse wool felting needle. I prefer the 40 gauge spiral needle from Living Felt for its versatility, but any 38 gauge or below needle will also work well for coarse wool. Now we're just going to poke all along the strip of wool you just added to secure it tightly to the wire. For those of you who've never done any needle felting before, felting needles work by catching wool fibers and pulling them inward. So the more you poke a clump of wool, the smaller and denser it becomes. Now add glue to the next couple inches of the spine wire. Grab another small clump of wool, and this time, using your needle, attach one end to the wool that's already there, then wrap just like before. Repeat this process until you've covered the spine and all four legs. Leave the claws alone for now. Next, we're just going to continue with the second layer of wool. As before, start by attaching one end of a clump of wool to one end of your sloth, and wrap the rest around tightly. Use your needle to secure it and make sure to keep poking until the wool feels firm. We are using coarse wool for the inner layers by the way because it felts quicker and more firmly than fine wools. Repeat this step until the body is about an inch thick and the limbs about a quarter inch. 
At this point, we are going to add wool to specific areas that need to be expanded and shaped. The chest needs to be wider and flatter, so start by adding some wool to either side of the body below the arms. Use your needle to attach it and felt it until it is firm. Keep adding to both sides and felting until your sloth's torso is 1.5 to 2 inches wide. We also want to give our sloth a cute little belly, so add some wool to that area as well. For now, we are just going to add one last layer of wool to the body using our beige coarse wool. I use Driftwood MC1 Merino Blend from Living Felt for this. The reason for this step is just so that we don't have white showing through when we add fur to the body. Leave the face white since it will end up mostly white anyway. Before we work on the claws, we first need to mix some wool into a new color. We want a slightly yellowish white, so take a clump of white merino and a very small amount of yellow merino. Lay one directly on top of the other, and then simply pinch both ends and pull the fibers apart. Put the clumps you have in each hand back together and repeat until the colors are evenly mixed. So next up is the claws. Add a bit of glue to one of the claw wires. Attach a very small amount of wool to the wool at the base of the claw using your fine wool needle. I use a 42 gauge triangle needle from Living Felt, but anything 38 and above will also work. Wrap the wool around the claw until it is completely covered. Add more wool near the base and less near the tip using the needle to secure it so that the claw ends up with a tapered appearance. Repeat this process for all the claws. Finally curve each claw around your fingers so that they form hooks. At this point, if what you have looks like some sort of faceless clawed nightmare creature, you're on the right track. Don't worry, it'll look like a cute sloth by the end, I promise. Take the time now to pose your clawed nightmare creature. Her head and neck should bend upward and her face should be looking to one side. When the sloth is placed on her back, her limbs should point upward with the arms slightly bent at the elbow or about the halfway point. Now you're ready to create the face. Take your coarse wool needle and start sculpting the basic shape of the head and face. The snout should protrude about half an inch from the center of the lower half of the face. The line of the nose to the forehead should be slightly concave when viewed in profile. Make sure you felt everything extra firmly. Take a small amount of coarse black wool and roll it into a ball between your thumb and index finger. Place it on the center of the snout and felt it in place. For detail work like this, what I like to do is use the needle to guide the fibers into place. To do this, take the tip of the needle and push the wool around or hook some fibers and pull them to where you need them to go and then poke them into place. Once the black wool is firmly and smoothly felted, carve two nostrils by poking the same spot again and again until it forms an indentation. Carve a mouth under the nostrils using the same technique to make multiple indentations in a line. Next, make a couple eyeballs by rolling two small balls of black wool with your fingers. Attach each to either side of the nose, level with the upper edge of the nose and very slightly to the left and right of the lateral edges of the nose. Felt each eye firmly into a slight dome shape. Next, we're going to give our slot some eyelids. Roll a small strip of gray coarse wool and place one end in the corner of one eye. Secure it there using your needle and begin moving in a circle around the outer edge of the entire eye, felting as you go. Use the needle tip to move the wool where you want it to go. The eye should be slightly smaller and more oval shaped when you're finished. Now we are going to give our sloth her eye patches. So take a small amount of dark brown merino wool and roll it into a narrow strip. Place it in the inner corner of an eye toward the outside of the eyelid. Felt the corner in place and continue around the entire eyelid keeping the dark brown wool along and partly covering the outer edge of the eyelid. Once you've worked your way around the entire eye, make a line of dark brown starting from the outer corner of the eyelid and tracing diagonally downward and outward just past the corner of the jaw. Then repeat this for the next eye. Now we need to give the eyes an iris and a pupil. So roll up two teeny tiny balls of brown wool and place one in the center of an eye. Very gently felt it in place again, using the tip of the needle to control the fibers so that they stay inside the circle as you push them inward. When you're done, poke a tiny hole in the center of the iris to give it a pupil. Then repeat this for the other eye. Next, you are going to give your sloth a sort of headband of dark brown that forms an arch from the corner of one jaw up to the forehead and then back down to the opposite corner of the jaw. The last thing you need to do with the face is color in the white areas with mer white merino. This also serves the purpose of tidying up the lines around the snout and the eye markings. Another reason to add the white merino is it's a more true white than the core wool, which more closely resembles the fur of the face. A 
A small detail you can add at this point is a tiny amount of white at the upper corners of the snout and the bottom of the chin. It should be small enough amount that you can see the black wool underneath. In this final section, I'm going to show you how to make realistic fur. Start by cutting a small amount of your white merino into a half inch clump. Take care to keep the fibers lined up with each other. Felt one end into the upper edge of the nose so the rest fans out upwards along the forehead. Move upward, gently felting in the fibers as you go. Stop about halfway up, leaving the rest loose. Cut away the part that extends beyond the dark brown line on the forehead. Next, to create the color for the body fur, mix about two parts white, one part beige, and a tiny bit of the yellow merino. Now we're going to give our sloth her sexy Captain Kangaroo hairdo. Take a clump of the fur you just mixed up. Keeping it straight and even, cut it into half or into about one and a half inch clumps. Place a thick clump of it on top of your sloth's head, attaching one end to the upper edge of the brown stripe along the forehead and felt it in, moving backwards towards the neck. Take another one and a half inch clump and place it so that one end runs along the center line of the top of the head. Felt this end in and arrange the rest of the fur so that it falls along the side of the head. Repeat on the other side. Continue adding fur along the center line of the neck until you reach the chest and shoulders. Moving on to the torso, as you can see I started adding fur to the chest first and moving downward from there. In this case, do as I say, not as I do. It makes things easier if you start from the tail and work your way up instead. Add a clump of wool down near the tail with the fibers lined up along the length of the body. Felt it in only at the head end, leaving the tail end free. Continue adding fur until you cover this entire bottom row. At the sides, angle the fur diagonally downward. Leave the back alone for now. When you start the next row, lay the fur down so that it covers the top half of the last row. This way you hide the parts that you've indented with your needle. Continue this process all the way up to the neck. Now just do the same thing on the back, but take care to avoid felting the loose ends of the fur along the sides. To add fur to the tail, simply wrap a clump or two of fur around the entire tail, keeping the fibers oriented lengthwise. Once you felt it in, Keep the ends at the tip of the tail free and cut the excess. To add fur to the legs and arms, all you are going to do is take an uncut clump of wool about three inches in length and wrap it around the limb so that the two ends are facing back towards the tail. Pinch the ends and pull them tight, then felt the fur in, leaving the ends free. Now just repeat this until the limb is covered up to the base of the claws. Repeat this process for the remaining limbs. The last thing we need to do is add a couple of stripes to our sloth's back. So just take a strip of white merino about three inches long and half an inch wide and place it lengthwise down the center of the back. Felt that in gently, and then felt the thin strip of dark brown down the center of the white stripe. Before I decide I'm completely done with the piece, I look it over and fix any little detail that bothers me. In this case, I thought my sloth's snout was a little too short, so I just added more wool to lengthen it. And you're done! Thank you so much everybody for sitting through my first awkward attempt at a tutorial video. And for those of you who actually did everything that I said, congratulations on finishing your houseplant sloth. I'd like to thank Living Felt once again for sponsoring this video. If you liked what you saw today, please like, comment, and subscribe. Also, please comment what you'd like to see next. Uh, I'm planning on making a lot more of these tutorial videos, so that would be a big help. Also, if you had any questions, please leave those in the comment section as well. Please check out my Instagram, Facebook, and blog. See you next time.